Burkina, wave a Jenny beer like a common deal, we be a rock or long Jenny be also in your beyond a pet about in Sweden. Well, no, no, at least we know I've been here maintaining you for some time. Burkina is a food, it's very good, and because of the millet that is inside, when we eat it, even when we're hungry, we can eat it, satisfies me. Oh, Burkina. Is, is a nice lo local drink uh, when when taken it actually refreshes you sometimes when we the guys uh, when we are done with classes and then we come by these um, Don Simon and others that when you get Burkina let's say three bottles and then you are done with it it really refreshes you up Burkina is a millet and milk smoothie also called Dega or Nunu in some parts of West Africa. It's a fermented beverage made from cow milk and millet. Burkina can be considered a nutritious beverage. A dietitian at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. Marina Ferreba Tando, believes it can be promoted as a very good breakfast and snack to particularly reduce iron deficiency among Ghanaian children. Burkina is a very healthy beverage that we should promote as an indigenous beverage in Ghana because it contains the necessary carbohydrates, essential amino acids, that is the proteins, essential fats, and it also has minerals and vitamins. So minerals such as copper, iron, and zinc. And considering the fact that over 50% of Ghanaian children are anemic, it's very important that we promote foods that are high in iron, such as Burkina. So it could be a potential good breakfast or even a snack for the population of Ghana. The beverage, which is said to have originated from Burkina Faso, is fast becoming popular in Ghana. Dr. Marina Tando therefore decided to investigate the nutritional and microbiological quality of Burkina. Together with one of her students, Baba Kwenya Adams, they collected six 300 milliliter Burkina from local producers and retailers in different locations in the Kumasi metropolis. I purchased the Burkina from the retailers along um, the Kenya Sea stretch, so from campus to Tech Junction to Anwanga Junction through to Abu Abu. Coliforms are bacteria that normally live in the intestines of healthy people and animals. They are therefore commonly found in the feces. They are also found in plants and in the soil. Escherichia coli or E. coli is a major member in the coliforms family and is found in the feces. Some strains of E. coli can cause severe stomach cramps, vomiting and bloody diarrhea and urinary tract infections. E. coli is mainly um, transmitted through the fecal route and so anything that contains fecal matter can potentially um, infect, um, contaminate the product. The permissible coliform limit is 10 coliform units per 0.1 milliliter of any food substance. At the end of the research, we found out that four of uh, Burkina samples collected from the various locations had high levels of E. coli, whereas two had high levels of other coliforms but not E. coli. The maximum total coliform count recorded by the team in the Burkina was over 900 times and the minimum count being 100 times. All of them couldn't pass the um, coliform levels. Dr. Tando's team have also visited some production sites. E. coli is a pathogen that is uh, easily transmitted through fecal matter and so anything that contains fecal matter is a potential source of um, contamination with E. coli. And so for this Burkina, for us to find E. coli in there could mean that um, there, there were several sources of contamination with fecal matter. And that uh, possibly could have come from the storage condition of the beverage. And in this case, we found that some of their storage facilities 
had rodent infestation. And so it could come from the fecal matter of the rodents. It could also be from the storage of water that was used in preparing the Burkina beverage. And so poor storage conditions of the water could be a potential source of E. coli contamination. It could also be from poor hygienic practices of the producers. And so if they had um, fecal matter on their hands during the packaging process, they could transfer the E. coli to the beverage. Um, several other factors could also include um, poor fecal dis disposal, um, poor um, treatment of sewage is another potential source of E. coli contamination. So my recommendation would be that surveillance is very important on the part of the Food and Drugs Authority and all the other authorities in charge of ensuring that our food is healthy. Reporting for joining us, Kwesi Deborah.